I am Tom Solomon. I'm a master naturalist from the Galveston Bay Area chapter. I have been working in seeds and restoration, prairie restoration, since 2004. I live in, in uh, Clear Lake City and I collect seeds anywhere close to me, which includes the Deer Park Prairie because they have very unusual plants here. I would like to show you today how to collect blue salvia, salvia zure seed, before the seeds are actually finished. And if you look at this plant here, you notice that the blue flowers are up almost on every one of the seed stems, but there's seeds underneath the last blue flower, and those seeds have been pollinated. And so consequently, I'm going to try to get these seeds underneath here without affecting the blue flower. And to do that, I very carefully get everything else out of the way, put my fingers lightly on the stem, and pull upwards very carefully, and then open my hand. And what I've got now is seeds that I will dry. Once they dry completely out, the black seed will drop out of these and they're ready to lay down. This is Gara, is also a native to Texas. And the seeds dry on the stem and fall off. But they're a football that's on the stem, usually very close to the top. And this one is ready. Here's the bloom. When a bee or an insect pollinates it, that's when it forms the seed, the finished seed. These need to dry completely before I lay them down. But if they dry on a the plant, they'll fall right off. So you see none of them on the plant that is dry. Here's another one. And but, they're green. And they are green. Usually with a little bit of purple around the edges. But these are green. This is clustered bush mint. It is a forb. It's very easy to grow. I'm going to show you the seed first by cutting one of these and holding it. If I turn it over, the seeds will drop out. This is the bushmint seed. They are tiny, tiny, tiny. This is Rattlesnake Master. I usually only cut the middle one. And the seeds are right here. And as soon as this dries out, there's the seeds. I have learned that the Indians use the roots for treating rattlesnake bites. The big center pod here, here, here is much easier to get these seeds off of. The little ones, in my opinion, fall outside the realm of effort to get the seeds. This is Leatris. I think it's called uh, Gay feather, Kansas gay feather. Uh, this particular plant is Leatris pycnostasia. Pycnostasia is the big one. And this is big meaning thick or tall. Could mean either. The acidota is about this tall, 18 inches, and very thin. So it is very clear which one this is. And to pick the seeds off this, you have to be careful. But what I do is pick them backwards. And that's 6,000 seeds, massive number of seeds. Needs to be dried. Usually I put these in the garage for two days in a, a Coke tray, you know, a, a, a um, cardboard tray like the Atoll, because there's insects in here. If I take these insects in the house, my wife gets very upset with me. So two or three days in the garage, they go inside just take the whole coke tray in and put them on the table. They will be ready to sow probably in two, three weeks. I personally don't sow forb seeds until January. 
Forb is a flower, not a grass, not a sedge. There's not much to see here, but this is actually rough cone flower. You can see the leaves from the new growth. They're very, very similar. Uh, this is an annual, by the way. And this is the seed head. And I usually cut these very similar to this. And this will produce roughly 200 plants. It's amazing how many this will produce. Just like the Rudebeckia hirta, the, the head is very similar, but much smaller. They don't get 100 plants. These do 200. This is Gallardia ascavalis. It's different than the Gallardia, Gallardia puchella, which is a continuous brack around the purple center. If you notice, this is open, serrated, and that's where it gets its name, Lance Leaf Gallardia. Gallardia. And it's all over Deer Park Prairie. And, and it seeds all year long, so I get my seeds. First year, yeah. As soon as you see a bloom, it's telling you it's time to look for the seed heads because this is what they look like and then they go gray. This is full of seed and it has been pollinated and it's ready to go. I'm, we sh Yeah, here we go. Here's one right here. This is the seed. There it is. See what it looks like? Does that help? That's full of seed. All right, the seeds on these actually are around the base of the flower. And if you start peeling, that's a rosette form. And if you just start peeling, going around, pulling the seed bracts off. And I'm gonna pull the next one and theoretically underneath it, there's a seed. Here's a seed. You can see the black center. That's where those came from. All the way around the seed head. There's about 8 to 12 seeds. The name of this plant is, uh, common name is turkey foot. This is uh, big blue stem. I've seen this plant anywhere from 8 feet to 12 foot tall. And as you can see, the seeds are all purple. They haven't even pollinated yet. The pollen will come out next on the tops of the seeds and then they will trickle down. So these have got a long way to go. I usually pick this seed in December. This is also big blue stem, but it also shows the pollen on the tips of the seeds. And that's, that's why these seeds are not ready yet. These will pollinate. Look at this one here is probably the biggest one. We'll pollinate and then probably six weeks to dry out depending on the weather. This stem is also Florida Pass Palum, same as this one, but the seeds are dry and ready to pick. And I'll show you how I do this. I actually put my hand together and just pull across the stem, just like I did with the blue salvia. And there is the seeds coming off. And these are ready to lay down. Now I will dry these in the house for two or three days before I put these on Go soil. Ahead, this plant is Eastern Gamma Grass. This is a bloom stalk. And what you see on here is the pollen. Okay. Back here, look at the size of the female part of the inflorence. This is related to the corn, and consequently, each of the cells is very large. And the pollen generating male portion of this is out here. This will drop off when it finishes doing its job. And each one of these cells will dry out one or two at a time, and the birds get 90% of these seeds. This is switchgrass. And this is the seeds. Very, very easy to pick when it's ready. If it wasn't ready, they wouldn't come off in my hand and they would be more purple. I'm gonna do this again. 
dry it out, put it in a paper bag. I usually don't seed this until the soil starts to heat up in the greenhouse, usually February or March. And switchgrass is one of the four mm. dominant grasses. Yes. And it has roots that will go up to 15 feet. Thank you.